I will be talking to the CEO of uh, the National Entrepreneurship Innovation uh, Plan, lawyer John Kuma. And we're talking about unemployment and how the NEIP has made efforts to at least, um, you know, reduce the number of unemployment issues in the country. And so, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you doing, morning, by the way? I'm doing well. All right. So, the World Bank says that in, in Ghana, out of every two youth, at least one person is unemployed. And I believe that that's how come the NEIP, um, you know, came about. Tell me, first of all, how effective has your plan been in terms of addressing this issue? Yes, thank you. Um, so the, that's the idea to reduce the unemployment yeah. in the country. And so far, we have been very consistent in engaging young people in Ghana. Mm. It's not only through the NEIP. Government has used the NAPCO, yes. YEA, among other things. Exactly. But the key machinery for sustainable job creation in the private sector is the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program. Mm. And government has set up a 100 million USD facility okay. to support young entrepreneurs in the country. Mm. And so far, in the past two years that uh, we started rolling out, we have trained about 19,000 young startups in the country. Okay. And we have funded up to 5,000 of them oh. with a minimum of 10,000 cities and a maximum of 100,000 Ghana okay. cities and we continue to do more. Mm. So one of the key mandates of the NEIP program mm. is to also help the change the culture and paradigm of job creation where students are in school and they are thinking of going to look for a job after school. Yeah. So we have set up various uh, students entrepreneurship initiatives on the various campuses. We are setting up entrepreneurship clubs and encouraging pitching, business pitches on the campuses mm. so that when you are at, well, as you are in school, you begin to think about what you do you after do. school. Okay. And then after school, too, we are able to help you to scale up. Okay. So the, the intervention is gradually picking up and more young people are helping to create their jobs. All right, that's great. So that means that, like you said, you're supporting small businesses and yes. startups as well. Yes. So then there is a plan yes. as to how to go about it. I want you to give me some more um, you know, updates on this plan. And also, how do you recoup the money that you invest in some of these businesses as well? Yes, um, so far, last year, we funded about 1,350. The mm. recovery rate is about 70%. Okay. And what we do is that after our funding, we have three years continuous mentoring arrangement with the beneficiaries. Ah. So we don't just fund you and go to and sleep. We okay. have to make sure we guide you through the processes to grow because that's why it's a plan. Mm -hmm. And some of them, they don't even just need money. They even need support in maybe acquiring their licensing in some of the regulatory regimes mm -hmm. like the FDA, the Standard Authority, among yeah. other things. So this is one of the ways. And then we also help you gain access to market. So apart from providing money, we have to ensure that the product or service that you are providing is also well marketed mm. and not just local marketing. We okay. are also looking at the international market. And fortunately now Ghana is going to be the hub for the intercontinental Africa free trade mm. arrangement, which means that we are going to have a bigger market on the African continent to tap into. Okay. And, and one of our roles is to make sure that young people take advantage of these oh, bigger please. markets, okay. among other things. And we give the business advisory services. Mm. We also help in creating the enabling environment for, for startups to do well. Mm. And so since 2017, the government of Ghana has passed the Startup Act, where young business startups under the age of 35 years can apply for tax holidays up to five years okay. so that they can reinvest their um, funds into their businesses and get more working capital to, okay. to work with. Okay. All right. Now, I want to ask this. I, I, I just want to ask um, in relation to other initiatives like MassLock, yes. which here says that provides micro and small loans for startups and small businesses fast, easy, and accessible microcredits, uh, small loans to grow and expand their businesses as well. Now, when you take a look at the NEIP as well, it exists to enable new businesses to emerge and give them space to grow, receive financing, and business development services. These look like two similar initiatives. Okay, yeah. so then how do you, a lot of people are saying that, why doesn't government just focus on one? So if it's the NEIP, then it's just NEIP, and then maybe under that we have a lot of other ways by which we can help businesses. But if we have bits and pieces of all these, uh, you know, initiatives, then that's like double what's happening. I mean, it, no, does that not create confusion? Not at all. Okay. All these agencies work in complementary roles. And if you look at the nature of the Ghanaian economy, mm. we really have micro, the tabletop kind of businesses yeah. 
who require just 500 cities or 1,000 Ghana cities, and they are able to do well, you understand. Mm. So Maslow targets low-level income micro-businesses. Okay. The NEIP focuses more than just giving money. We help you build you to become an entrepreneur. Mm. So, and as part of the process, we will give you funding, but we start you from 10,000 cities, okay. which means that you are above the Maslow level. And, and, and apart from giving you the money, we give you broader training to okay. help you how to manage your business, do a proper business plan, and set your business targets and grow to become a big business. And when you grow to a certain level that uh, you, you cross the level of 100,000 Ghana cities, then maybe another agency of government comes in yeah. to pick you up to grow. Maybe you're going to uh, become a... Uh, an SME, so maybe NBA, mm. SSI, and other things can also, can come, also in come in to help you to grow okay. beyond a certain level. Mm. So all these rules are complementary. And if you look at YEA, mm. um, they are there to help youth in the informal sector to have temporary two to three years employment. Okay. And, but beyond that, we are working with them to also look at their exit strategy, where we are going to train the exiting beneficiaries to become entrepreneur, and then they can also be funded for them to also start their businesses. Okay. If you look at NAPCO, it's also to help the educated youth, up to 100,000 of them for about three okay. years, whilst they don't have jobs, to also get integrated into the process. But those who may not have the opportunity of getting okay. permanent job okay. can also be trained under our entrepreneurship programs then they can also be funded. Those of them with creative, biz innovative ideas can be, funded can be funded to also start their business. All right. There's a reason I ask how you could retrieve, you know, the monies that you invest in some of these businesses and startups, especially because when we take a look at Maslock, um, you know, there have been some accusations leveled against them, embezzling of funds, and also um, inability to retrieve the money that, you know, they invested in businesses as well. So then how does the NEIP, um, you know, intend to do that especially yes. and fight off some of these accusations that may come eventually as well obviously um, yeah. there are genuine concerns and uh, but one of the key ways we manage with our recovery is that after we have funded you you have a three years mandatory mentoring arrangement under our program and we, you have up to 24 months to repay the facility we give you so oh, okay. we are able to guide you and recover our funds at the what same time what if i'm not able to you know pay back within the 24 months what happens we will have to know because there's a constant m and e engagement okay. with you okay. we have to if there's a genuine reason why in a particular payment period you are missing we will know mm. and then we'll have to help you to overcome that challenge okay. so that it can stay within your payment okay. plan so there will be support all to ensure yes. that you can still raise some yes. money yes. as well uh, there have also been accusations that only party foot soldiers are the ones benefiting from the NEIP and all these other initiatives um, you know, that have come up. Is that true? No, not true. Mm. Because the NEIP is designed such that you, you don't even have to know anybody to qualify. Yeah. First of all, in the first window of application, yeah. when we open it, we receive 7,000 applications. Mm. And all the 7,000 had opportunity to go for training. Okay. It is, and the training is done by our partner, private hubs and institutions. Okay. So when you go there, these are seasoned business people who are looking and assessing your business, and they uh, select the best ones for government to fund. So there's no backdoor no back door as to how approach. the 1,350 were selected exactly. the first time. There was no backdoor. There can be no backdoor. And this year, we, we 12,000 applied. Mm -hmm. All the 12,000 went through the same training processes. Once you apply, you qualify. Yeah. But it's at the training at the center of training that your business will then be assessed and whether you'll be selected or not depends on your performance at the training. Yeah. So there's no political interference. And, and so far, we selected 3,000 out of the 12,000 mm, to receive the funding. To receive the funds. So we are very confident about the process and all the beneficiaries so far can testify. Mm that indeed they have gone through a fair process. When is the next window opening? Because a few people, my, my director <laughs> said she wants to start a cool store. Okay, that's a good so idea. she would want to apply as well. Yes, yeah, she, she can qualify. So it's likely January to March is usually the window of application. Okay. But it's also subject to the minister's uh, permission. All right. Uh, the Honorable Dr. Awal Muhammad, Awal so yeah. Minister for Business Development. Yeah. If he gives the green light, then the next 2020 window of application will be from January mm. to March. I see. What are you looking forward to in terms of the budget reading tomorrow for 2020? Um, you know, especially for the NEIP and 
projects moving forward? Yes, I, I, I can see a lot of hope and uh, assurance of sustainability for all the good efforts of government to be consolidated in 2020. Okay. I see a lot of um, uh, development projects being you know, accelerated in, mm -hmm. in, in 2020, especially with the good news of Sino Hydro hmm. Phase 1 being yeah. approved, among yeah. other things. Uh, even under the NEIP program, we have a World Bank support for 2020, which is commencing from February. Awesome. So we are going to have more funding for more youth enterprises in the country. I see. Well, we're looking forward to it. A lot of people are looking forward to the budget especially. And the youth are saying that we're tired of the taxes. So maybe that's also another way by which, you know, um, we, we can get the pressure off us. Are you, are you yes, we have actually thing? passed the startup tax act okay. for young people to enjoy up to five years tax holidays. Is it? Yes. So I encourage young people to apply. You can apply through the NEIP. Since 2017, there's a tax holiday act for young people. Mm. So I encourage them to take advantage. All right. Well, good news for you. I've been speaking to the CEO of the National Entrepreneurship Innovation Plan, lawyer John Kuma. Thank you so much Thank for throwing you. some light on it as well.